I'm Susan Lewis in the WRTI Performance Studio. It is National Hispanic Heritage Month. We are in the midst of it. It's from September 15th to October 15th. We are here with representatives of the Philadelphia Argentine Tango School and guest artists who will perform contemporary and traditional arrangements of tango. We're also videotaping this session so you can see the whole thing if you go to WRTI.org. Why don't we have the artists here rep introduce themselves first? Emilio. Yes. Hi. My name is Emiliano. Emiliano Messias. I'm a pianist, composer, and arranger. And you're based in New York? I'm based in New York. But I'm from Argentina. Okay. Hello. My name is Leandro Ragusa. I'm also a composer, arranger, and bandoneon player. I'm from Buenos Aires. I'm Meredith Klein, the director of the Philadelphia Argentine Tango School. And I am Gustavo Rember, dancer based in Buenos Aires. Great. Why don't we get to right to music? The first piece, Leandro, is your piece. Can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. It's a piece that I, one of my first pieces that I composed eight years ago. It was originally written for swing quartet and bandoneon. Now we, are, we have an arrangement for duo. It's dedicated for my to my daughter, who is Catalina. So uh, the name is. Tema de Cata. It is. Tema de Cata. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You're listening to music performed live from the WRTI Performance Studio.
That was beautiful. Tema de Cata by Leandro Ragusa. Yeah, that was really wonderful. And it kind of introduced us to this beautiful instrument you're holding, the bandoneon. Yes, it's, it's a German instrument. It was um, created for the procession, the religious procession, to re replace the, the big church organs. So the, the people hang the bandoneon and go walking on the street with the, with the mass. Maybe we could describe it for those not watching on video. It's a beautiful <laughs> instrument. It looks like ivory inlaid. It's yeah, many people uh, is confused about bandoneon, accordion. It's totally different from the accordion. It's another instrument. Uh, well, the most difficult, difficult things here is that it has like four keyboards because when you open and we close, uh, push at the same button, it's different sound. So, as you can see, <laughs> all the all the notes are different and all is random without no order. So I have to learn one keyboard opening, the same keyboard closing, and the same for the left hand. Wow. So <laughs> that's that's where it's it's not so easy to to learn on the beginnings, of course, like every instrument. So when did you start playing the bandoneon? Well, I started playing like 25 years ago. Yeah, it was many long time. <laughs> it's very common where you live. Well, it's more and more common. Yeah, tango is growing up very, very, very quickly. Yeah, very fast. And there are many young people who is who are uh, studying bandoneon. More and more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. You. Now the next piece we will hear, Emiliano. Hello. Hello. You composed this piece. Yes, I did. This is uh, it's a song called Cesar's Tango. Cesar is a name in Spanish. Actually, we we say Cesar. That's and the reason that the name is because this this song belongs to a musical. It's a work in progress. Actually, I'm composing the music for a for a new musical that is called the, the musical is called Bordello, and it's a musical that is set in the 1920s in Argentina. And the book and lyrics are, are written by Barbara Bellman, who's a writer here from Philly. And this is one of the songs, actually, it's, it's going to be sung by by the main character, w who's called Cesar, Cesar. But I did an arrangement for the duo because I really wanted to, to try it also in instrumental version. Great. You're listening to WRTI from the performance studio, Cesar's Tango. Thank you. Thank you. 
Wow. Cesar's Tango. That makes me want to know more about what's going on in that story. <laughs> well, that's a good sign. <laughs> it's great. Thank so, you. So, Emiliano, tell us a little bit about the, the story of this musical. This, this song is sung by the main character, you said? Uh, yes, one of the main characters is called Cesar, and it's actually a tribute to a writer, an Argentinian writer from the 1920s, which is called Cesar Tiempo. It's a, it's a real writer from Argentina. So this is his... Uh, this is his character, and this is going to be his main song. Uh, we're actually working on the lyrics. I mean, this is a real uh, work in progress. We are right now working on this, and this is just a, a new... We just played the song yesterday, actually, for the very first time. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it, but I'm very excited. And it will be played in the show by an orchestra of how... Yeah, well, many? we're thinking about a 10-piece orchestra, probably. And the musical is going to have, so far we have six singers, uh, so still in progress and thinking on changes, but <laughs> very happy about it. That's great. Yeah. We'll have to follow that. Well, we've heard a piece written by you, Emiliano, and yep. you, Leandro, and now we are turning to Astra Piazzolla. And Leandro, could you teach history of tango in uh, Buenos Aires, is that right? Yeah, and the Tango University in Buenos Aires. And uh, could you talk about Piazzolla's role in the musical genre? Well, Piazzolla was a great composer, one of the great composers in tango. He, he changed the way to write tango and play tango. And in particular, this piece uh, we are going to play, which is Adios Nonino. He was in, in New York, played in New York, and he received a call and he learned that his father died in Buenos Aires. So he began to write this piece um, and he, he named it Adios Nonino because the family called to his grandfather Nonino. That's why the name of the, this beautiful piece. So translated that means oh. goodbye? Yeah. Goodbye. Like that, yeah. Goodbye Nonino. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Adios Nonino by Astor Piazzolla. You're listening to WRTI from the WRTI Performance Studio.
Adios Nonino by Astor Piazzolla. And I was thinking during that piece of music, it, you, you see the passion and the way that music can really express something. This was Piazzolla's goodbye to his grandfather um, and composed from an improvisation. And a very intense song uh, to, to play always because of these two sections, you know, it has like this rhythmic, like very kind of aggressive and intense into that completely mellow and beautiful melody in the middle. So it's always hard to, to, to change those moods, you know, just to start from something like that and to go into something completely different and sweet. So, but it's, we, we really enjoy to play the song always. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, it, it was, oh, I was thinking, Meredith, Meredith Klein, why don't you come up here and, and chat with us? Um, Meredith, again, is the director of the Philadelphia Argentine Tango School, That's right? True. And I was thinking during that piece when I, at parts you felt like getting up and dancing, and but parts of it were very mellow. Talk a little bit about the difference or the relationship between tango music and tango dance. Sure. Okay, wonderful. Um, well, the tango, uh, sorry, the dance and the music of tango emerged together from tango's beginnings in the 1890s, and the music and the dance evolved and developed together um, in communication and back and forth with one another through tango's golden age, which was in the 1940s to 1950s. And then starting in the mid-1950s, for many different reasons, the tango social dance community declined. There was a steep decline from a situation where almost all the residents of Buenos Aires knew about the milongas, which were the places where people danced tango and heard tango orchestras. Either they danced or they went to a milonga to drink a coffee or whatever, but it was part of their lives. Um, starting in the mid-1950s, a situation started where fewer and fewer people were involved in tango dancing, until in the 1980s, nearly nobody danced anymore. The, the uh, tango social dance community was nearly completely quashed and extinct. So... Uh, what's happening now? <laughs> so then, um, while tango dancing declined, tango music went on its own path, and it largely went into the concert hall. The tango song also became more important. Um, and so, for example, we just heard an amazing piece of Piazzolla, where Piazzolla had studied with Nadia Boulanger in Paris and learned you know, classical composition techniques, also uh, borrowed a lot from jazz, brought that into tango and made something uh, longer, larger scale pieces that, yes, are complicated to dance, generally only used for dance performance, not for social dancing. So starting in the 1980s, tango social dancing came back very much and has been growing every single day worldwide, not just in Buenos Aires, but in Philadelphia, New York, and Tokyo, <laughs> and all over the world. Um, and we start, we're starting to see a situation where the quantity of tango social dancers and venues is enough to start bringing in live musicians again, live music. And so now, um, you know, musicians who would have just been playing on the concert stage are starting to come back to the milongas, to the tango social dance environment. Um, and so a lot of the, what we're getting to do here in Philadelphia is um, about the confluence of those things F once more, tango social dancing and tango music. Wow. So... Uh, the Philadelphia Argentine Tango School was started in 2008, you said? That's right, yes. And, and did you found it? I did. I'm the founder. And what was inspired you? Well, right now I've been dancing tango 21 years, so I've had a long path with it. Um, before I founded the school, I was living in Buenos Aires and teaching tango with a partner, and we were traveling a lot, and we decided it was time to set down roots and not be in a different city every week. And so of all the places on the map, we chose Philadelphia. Oh. And I'm so glad we did, because this is an amazing place. Well, cool. And I understand that you've commissioned an orchestra, a tango orchestra. Yeah, we were working. We had Emiliano Messias uh, many, many times come to play at the school for small events, large events, et cetera. Um, and, you know, started to see that something really missing in the, United, in the United States tango community was an orchestra typica, which is a complete tango orchestra, meaning that it's uh, a 10-piece orchestra and has three or four bandoneons. This didn't exist. Yes, so I said, hey, Emiliano, I think it's time for you to put one together. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and so the Tipica Messies uh, that Emiliano directs and Leandro is one of the amazing bandoneons of, it debuted at the Philadelphia Tango Festival in May of this year. So now, um, now we have a complete tango orchestra in the U.S., and it's based in New York. 
Wow. So, Emiliano, tell us yeah. about the orchestra. It, it has three bandoneons. Well, actually it has four, four bandoneons uh, and four violins, one double bass, and me on the piano and direction. So we are the whole orchestra, we are ten musicians. To have an orchestra typical, as Mary was saying, you, you should have at least eight musicians. So we, we would be three bandoneons and three violins. I decided to add more just to give even bigger. And what typical orchestra means is, is basically a, a, an orchestra that plays the popular rhythm of, of, the, of the region that belongs. That's why Orquesta Típica is not only tango, uh, you can find Orquesta Típicas in Mexico that plays their, their Mexican oh. music or in Ecuador or in any, any part of the world. In, in the case of Argentina or Uruguay as well, Típicas orchestras, Orquestas Típicas play tango, that's why. So, so your orchestra... Yes, exactly. Well, yes, yeah. plays tango mostly. We play tango. We yes. play tango. Vals also is a is a rhythm that we also include in the tango music, and also milongas, which is another rhythm. So these three rhythms are, are the repertoire of typical Messias. Yeah. <laughs> and I understand the next piece yeah. is uh, important to this orchestra. Uh, yeah, because uh, uh, well, first of all, the, the piece is called uh, Nueve de Julio. Nueve de Julio means 9th of July, which is the um, Independence Day of Argentina. That was is a is a composition that was is a very old composition from 1916 by the composer Luis Padula. He actually composed it uh, as a tribute to the Independence Day of Argentina, and I made an arrangement for for the orchestra, um, and we really like it, right? <laughs> so we wanted to do a version. Of course, we are ten, so I did a, a version for for a duo in this case. So we're going to play that that version of Nueve de Julio, 9th of July. Excellent. You're listening to WRTI live from the performance studio. Great. Oh, my gosh. I, well, for those of you who are listening and not watching the video, it was sort of fun to watch the, the 
expressions between <laughs> the two of you during that piece. We're kind of dancing, right? You were kind of dancing, <laughs> yes. And so what the piano was covering what instruments? Uh, a little bit of uh, <laughs> everything. We were trying to cover everything. <laughs> yeah, we were, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Violin, part of the bandonion also. I was improvising also some other stuff. I was adding. The thing about tango is that um, tango is in between, you know, in between classical music and popular music. I always say so we have that freedom that we also can add or improvise on top of something that is al already written. So that's why I love it to play because it, you have th that freedom, you know. Yeah, it's, it, well, it's great. And it's, it's interesting because I think people may not realize the, the scope of tango music. Um, they may think only of tango dance. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But um, it's it's been it's been really great. All these pieces are wonderful and sort of illustrate the range of music that that tango totally. exists. Yeah. Yeah. And now we'd like Meredith and Gustavo to come over. And as a special treat, so we've been listening to all this wonderful tango music. Uh, now we're going to experience some tango dance. Meredith, can you talk about it? Yeah, we're going to dance. We're going to be improvising. Nothing is planned. I don't know if Gustavo's going to ask me to start with my right leg or my left. I'm about to find out. So uh, tango is a communication. It's a language. And um, it's not choreographed or planned in any way, which makes it really exciting, especially when we get to you know, dance with musicians who are also improvising to some extent. So it's something that's being made in the moment. And that's why we love it so much. So when you teach tango to people, w what are you teaching? You're teaching certain steps, and then they put them together in different combinations? Yeah, we're, and we're teaching it as a language, so they learn how to, uh, to communicate. So one person, the leader, is proposing, and the other person, the follower, is trying to understand, and together they're making a dance that is based on walking. So in some ways it's very simple, but because anything can happen, it's endlessly rich. So we, um, it keeps us interested decade after decade. It doesn't get boring. Wow. And Emiliano, and yep. um, you, you musicians will be playing as well. So yes. uh, are you follow, are they following you or are you following them? Well, uh, it is kind of like a connection all the time. We play and I think they uh, they are great listeners and they usually follow the music. Tell me if I'm wrong, Meredith, but we'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't. So we just Okay, play, you, you know? just play. <laughs> okay. All right, we're Danzerin? Danzarin. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay. By uh, Julian Plaza. Premiered in 1956. You're listening and watching WRTI from the Performance Studio.
That was wonderful, bravo. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Wow. That was Danserine by Julian Plaza. Uh, danced and played. Uh, thank you so much, Gustavo, Meredith, dancers, uh, Le Leandro and Emiliano. Thank, thank you, you so much thank for you. coming in much. and sharing your music, sharing uh, this wonderful uh, tango music and dance with us. And it is. Um, Spanish, I guess, Hispanic Heritage Month still. So you have busy schedules, I understand. You're you're performing in everywhere, Philadelphia, everywhere. New York, <laughs> Buenos Aires. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming in and sharing the music with us. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. And I uh, hope to see you again soon.